Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, website This Week in America. Thank you for joining us on the program. As mentioned, we're talking about the book Among the Repatriated, an autobiography of a Mexican-American by Albino Panetta. He explores a tragic era of American history when countless people of Mexican heritage were expelled from the United States through force or coercion. Again, the book is called Among the Repatriated, Autobiography of a Mexican-American, Albino Pineda, our guest on This Week in America. Sir, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us today. Yes, it's fine. Yes, it's, uh, yes, you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. It, rain, that's said before. Yes, well, it's great to have you with us on the program today. Uh, it's Thank a you. fascinating book. It's your story, and we'll get into being born in the United States, going to Mexico, coming back over. But it's interesting how the book got started. And this was what, written at the request of, uh, of your children. They wanted to find out more about your life story and you as a young man. So this basically started with your kids looking for some more information on you. Well, you know, we were children of undocumented uh, parents. My father came here during World War One to work on the railroads, and my mother later on crossed the border uh, selling bird cages to make a living. And they met, and uh, they got together. I haven't found a marriage license yet, but... Anyway, they uh, moved to Phoenix, where my father became a, a sharecropper. And uh, we were born in a one-room cabin. And uh, my father passed away uh, in the 1930s. And then my mother heard about the immigration, repatriating people back to Mexico. So she decided to go before she was repatriated to a uh, part of the country that she didn't want to go. So we went to Nogales, Mexico. And there's where I was raised as a child uh, until I became 17 years old. We suffered the consequences because my mother was illiterate and there were no jobs. So we barely survived for eight years there. Then uh, at 17 years old, I came back to Phoenix where I was born and looking for a half-sister I had there. And uh, I found her and stayed with her a couple of months. Then another half-sister I had here in Santa Paula, California, she sent me a Greyhound bus ticket. So I came to California and work uh, at the uh, Naval Base in Potwanimi. And as soon as I became 18, Uncle Sam called me and I gladly went, uh, served the Army for three years. I went to the war until the war end, came back, married, raised a family, and uh, here I am today. Well, it's so interesting, I yeah, in reading the book, and let's go back to, to 1917. Uh, your father is in the country, not a citizen, but at that point in history, what, there was a manpower shortage, and and citizens from, from Mexico were encouraged to come here and, and be part of the workforce, weren't they? That's right, yes. Uh, they moved anywhere they wanted without any fear of deportation. But then the uh, hard times came, the Depression, and uh, the government began to uh, repatriate people back to Mexico. Yeah, and you say one of the things that you you learned as as you as you're writing the book, and again the book sort of started out as as a family history, so your children and grandchildren understood about the the family and where you came from. It it, it focuses on the the difficulty in in the life of of repatriation. Let's talk about that because you were born in the United States, and your mother right. decided to go back to Mexico. Talk about how difficult that was, and I know you were very young when you, you when you went through that, but you do have some some vivid memories of of that process and how life dramatically changed from living here in the United States to to, to living in Mexico. Talk talk about the the challenges, the difficulties of, of what a family goes through in a situation like that. Well, you know, we rode on the back of a truck and 
we were very excited because we were going to somewhere we didn't know where it was. Yes. But it was an exciting trip, and we had all our belongings in the truck. And uh, in Mexico, it became very foreign to me because uh, uh, the neighborhood with a lot of kids. We were used to being the farm by ourselves. And moving to Mexico, we moved into a neighborhood that has a lot of kids all over the place. And uh, then I went to school, and I had a tough time understanding uh, uh, the classes. And I kind of hip-hop around the school, so I never finished uh, the fourth grade. With us on This Week in America is the author Albino Pineda. The book is called Among the Repatriated, Autobiography of a Mexican-American. Uh, joining us on the program, information available at the website amongtherepatriated.com. You can link on directly by going to our website thisweekinamerica.us. You talk in the book that it was common in the, the early 1940s at the border where you would see a rival of a, a number of Mexican families and in those Mexican families, there were a number of, of young children that were actually born in the United States that, that were U.S. citizens. Yes, the average family had about eight, eight persons in the family. Two were undocumented and six were American citizens. And that was a very common sight. Every day, hundreds of people were being repatriated. Some of them went, like my mother, voluntarily back to Mexico. And they stay there at the border, creating a problem of unemployment and uh, uh, hard, hard time, really. I had to go out and uh, survive by myself, uh, trying to find little jobs that I could do in order to buy something to eat, because uh, my mother didn't have any job and no income. Yeah, and children, you, that was pretty tough. you talk about all the, the struggles, the early poverty that, that you went through, and you feel that it, that it made you a stronger person, didn't it? Uh, can you hear that again? Yeah, you talk about the, the early poverty that you went through, and you felt that, that that made you a stronger person. Who you are today is, is in part, and you enjoyed both spectrums. You enjoyed... I, later life, having a, having an income and being able to have a nice lifestyle. It started off in poverty, but that poverty really, really was your foundation, wasn't it? What you went through made you who you are today. Yes, uh, I think it built my character. Uh, made me appreciate things more today. Uh, I'm very careful with the money that I earn, and... I know the value of money because uh, what I went through. The book is Among the Repatriated, an autobiography of a Mexican-American by Albino Pineda, our guest on This Week in America. The book's available uh, uh, the usual places around the country and at the website amongtherepatriated.com. Let's talk about the process of going back. Were there a lot of what-ifs as you went back and you reconstructed your life? What was this process like for you? Coming back over here? Yeah, well, going back over your life as you're, as you're writing the autobiography, what, what was that like? Were there a lot of, uh, and I'm sure it was a lot of filling in the blanks and thinking, okay, this is how I, I remember this, but a lot of what ifs, how your life would have changed differently had you taken different turns at dairy, d different stages? Uh, we had a, we didn't have a very easy life as we, uh, when, we when I got married. We, I was employed in construction, and uh, my work was uh, uh, temporary. I would work a month, be off two weeks, uh, work another month, and be off. So it was a uh, hip hop thing, you know, yes. skipping here and there. But we learned from, or my wife also came from a, a family from Mexico. Uh, except that her father was a, a businessman here in Santa Paula. But we learned to begin to save a little bit. Every paycheck I would save a little bit. And we made sure that at the end of the year we had saved some money. Uh, and that has been my uh, process through the years of uh, saving 
as much as I can uh, because I knew that the day would come when I would grow old and uh, not be working. Yeah, and that's a great lesson for the uh, for the family to to realize what you went through and how you were able to save and put together a, uh, enough for a, for a comfortable retirement, a, a comfortable living. Let's go back to to 1942 when you moved back to the United States, I believe, back to Phoenix at that time. Talk about the decision to come back to the United States and how life changed for you when you returned to the country. Okay, I I was 17 years old. And I had five dollars in my pocket and a Greyhound bus ticket to Phoenix. I arrived in Phoenix and uh, I didn't know where I was going. I crossed the street from the bus station. There was a hotel for a dollar a night, so I rented a room. And uh, for the first time, uh, I didn't know what to think. I had a bed for myself with a washbowl and uh, a room all to myself. That was unusual for me. But next morning, I got up and uh, there was a chili bean restaurant across the street. So I went and had a, a bowl of chili beans for five cents. Then I saw people in a corner waiting, and I assumed that they're waiting for somebody to pick them up to work. So I went over and joined them. So I went to join them, and pretty soon a truck came over, and I got lucked out that they picked me up too. And I ended up in a lettuce field. I didn't know anything about farms. So luckily, they put me on a truck uh, stacking up boxes. Uh, so I worked all that day and made $3.50, which was a lot of money for me. And uh, I went back to the hotel, paid another night. Then the next day, I didn't get picked up. And the following day, I didn't get picked up either. So my money began to uh, to fade. Yes. Well, so I saw a hotel that was renting cots, army cots, for 25 cents a night. So I went over and rented a cot and waited. Finally, I found my sister. I, I don't remember how, but I found her in a farm. And I went to stay with her for about a month. And... Uh, before I came to California, you know, in the book you talk about the uh, the jobs, and you ended up having uh, having good jobs and able to provide for the family and, and for yourself in, in later years. Community involvement was something that was very important to you, and still is. Talk a little bit about that because you really felt a uh, a calling to to give back. Well, you know, during the the last 10 years before I retirement was my, the best steady work that I had, and I made a lot of money. Uh, every week I had a good paycheck. But before that, 1970s, I was encouraged to run for office. He was an illiterate person running for office. So I ran for office and uh, got elected as a, uh, uh, one of the members of the school board of the of our district, the elementary school board. And I served for two terms. And uh, today I have a wall full of uh, uh, plaques that I received for my service. People liked the way I uh, conducted myself and uh, the ideas that I brought to the school board. So I'm a very lucky person, very lucky in that uh, uh, not having finished school, although right after I came out of the service, I began to take night classes, and I was able to get my high school diploma by GDT. Yes. The, so, the book is called Among the Repatriated, Autobiography of a Mexican-American. The author, our guest in the program, Albino Panetta, Let's talk a little bit, a couple minutes left in the program. I, I mentioned before you discussed the difficulty that, that people go through in the life with the re, being part of the repatriation process. Talk about that and your feeling on what we hear in the news about a wall being built and making people who are here go home and, and maybe come back and, and all of that. 
What are your thoughts on that? Because you, you've seen people go through the, the process before. You know the difficulty. You know what it does to people. You know what it does to families. What are, what are some of your thoughts when you, when you see those headlines? Well, you know, my mother went through a process. She applied for a visa, and she came over with a visa. And shortly after, she became a citizen. Uh, I, there has to be some kind of uh, uh, restraint in the border uh, and encourage people to come through the, through the right process. Right. Uh, there's a lot of need in south of the border uh, because of the governments and uh, the poor people that live there. There should be some kind of understanding with the governments to allow a certain number of people to come over uh, uh, because we do need, uh, you know, the labor. And without that labor, uh, I don't know what would happen. People talk about uh, taking jobs away from uh, citizens. Well, the jobs that these people take, uh, I don't think citizens are too, too much interested in them. Yeah, as you're reading the book, you, it sort of puts all of that problem in, in a perspective by someone who has actually uh, gone through that process during his life. The book is Among the Repatriated. A couple minutes left in the program. We talk about this. This started off as a, as a request family members to, to document your life. You decide to, to write the book. What was it like when you held a copy of the book Among the Repatriated? You've got the book. It's there. You've got the cover. You've got your picture and, and bio on the back. What was that experience like when you, you're holding a, a copy of a book that's published and you're the author of the book? I felt great. Yes. Uh, I couldn't believe that I had written the book. I had to reread it myself. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it just, uh, when my children asked me to write about my childhood and my growing years, so immediately I began studying, uh, writing. In fact, I wrote it in Spanish as well, so it's being published in Spanish. Well, it, it really is a, uh, uh, an interesting read. It's called Among the Repatriated, Autobiography of a Mexican-American. Albino Panetta, our guest on the program, the author of that book. Sir, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. I am in, enjoyed having a chance to, uh, to read the book and what you went through and the success you, you, you've had today in your personal life and your professional life. Thank you so much for sharing that with us on the program today. Yes, and by the way, the, the reason I entitled it Among the Patriated is because I lived among them. You know, we were all... Yes. So that's why I chose that. Yeah, it's interesting, uh, and, and we talked about that, where you're looking at the border and people coming back and, and families and families with children who were American citizens coming, uh, uh, going back in, into Mexico. It's it, it's very powerful scene that's in the book. Uh, the book is available. Uh, you can go to the website, get all the information, among the repatriated.com, and you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back on today's program after these messages. Don't go away. Coming right back. Thank you.